Hello, welcome in. I am Laura Bassett with From the Ground Up Landscape Designs, and today we're going to be walking through how to use Sketchbook as a tool for your landscape designs and some of the process that I go through when I set it up for my own company. And maybe some of these tips can help you in your design process to get a little bit better. So this is a live stream. So if anybody pops in, feel free to ask questions. This will be a series. So we're going to see how far we can get in about an hour and uh, we'll go from there. So let's jump right into it. We have, let's see, let's get our, let's get our screen up and running. There we go. So we have a base plan. So I pulled together just one that I've done from one of my projects. What I would normally do here is I would normally go on Google Earth and get a satellite view just as the start to the design. You're gonna wanna go out, you're gonna wanna measure it or hire a survey company to get an accurate survey. Uh, this particular plan that you're looking at is based on a survey for the building site. This is a new construction site. So we're gonna use this just for our purposes today because I don't want to uh, give away my client's information, okay? So let's switch over to the tablet. So I'm working with this beautiful Microsoft Surface. I love this as a, as a tool. It's really responsive. I know there's a lot of other drawing tablets out there, Wacom, um, even I know on the iPad, you can do some really great stuff. So you don't have to have the same exact laptop that I have, but you know, it is a really nice product. So I'm actually going to take off the keyboard for right now. So there's a few things that I want to point out that really I absolutely love about Sketchbook. So Sketchbook is a drawing app at its core. And so this is, um, there is a level of accuracy that you can have. However, this is more used for conceptual ideas, for getting the rough overview, maybe diagrams. This, this is used as a tool for your design work. This is not your AutoCAD. This is not your uh, land FX, right? This is not your precision tool. This is more your idea tool. So uh, what I really like about this, well, let's just kind of look at the working space before we get into anything particular. So there are these two little pucks that you can see me moving around over here. So these pucks are really quick usable uh, for the stylus. They're really quick usable tools. So the one that's that's clear is the brush size. So this is your brush size and you can drag it to the right or drag it to the left or break it. <laughs> so let's see if we can find the puck again. Nope. It disappeared. All right. Well, here's let's troubleshoot. Let's see. We've got the lagoon. We've got the toolbar. Let's let's turn off the brush puck and let's turn it back on. Here we go. Okay. Well, I broke it. I broke it completely. Hold on. This is this is the beauty of live streaming though. We're doing this all live. You guys get to see the actual procedure. And then of course we'll take this and put it into a beautiful, um, a wonderful YouTube that's nicely edited and everything. So let's just take a second. I'm gonna, we're gonna turn off the screen cause I'm gonna be saving. Cause sometimes that will Sometimes by saving it, it will kind of regenerate the program. Oh, that didn't do anything. All right, let's 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 close it all down and then let's boot it back up. <laughs> Gotta love it when this happens. So uh, while we're waiting, I just want to kind of note, we've got a, a slideshow going up above. It is, it is a miscellaneous, miscellaneous slideshow of projects we've done in the past some plant highlights, some construction highlights, some of the work that we've done, some of the construction work we've done. So um, that's going on just to you know give you some context into what we do. Our company mainly works with residential. However, we also work with commercial and we're aiming more for commercial lately. And um, we specialize in customizing each plan to the site. So we don't have a, we don't have a specific recipe that we come in with. We talk to the client. We make sure that we get very clear on the needs that they have for the property. And then we go into the design. So 
let's dive back into it. Okay. So this puck, all right, <laughs> this one, this one increases brush size. Okay. So if I drag it to the right, I'm dragging the stylus to the right. I'm increasing the size of my brush. If I drag it down, it decreases the opacity. Uh, if I drag it up, it increases the opacity. And if I drag it to the right, obviously it decreases the brush size. So you can see right there, you can see the brush size getting bigger and smaller on the screen. So then, you know, we can write on it. Um, let's make a, a layer just so we can play around on that layer. So that's fantastic because sometimes when you're drawing, I'm also an artist. So sometimes when you're drawing, you know, you get an idea and you're, you're thinking, okay, so I want, you know, I want this to be a tree here. And, and then, you know, I want, um, I want it to have a dark edge to it, but I want that to be a thinner line or, okay, that's not quite, that's too thick. So let's keep dragging until we get it to be the size we want, right? Uh, for the edge. So that's really nice. I like that ability in SketchUp. It's very intuitive as an artist to do that. For me, I'm left-handed. So I have these pucks on the left hand of the screen because I'm left-handed. So it's right here. It's on the side that my stylus is on. Uh, same thing with the brush puck, but you can move these things around and put them where it's the most comfortable for you. So for example, I've kind of moved the, the color palette around and we're going to get into setting up your color palettes. We're going to get into all of those things, uh, but we're just kind of going into the basic features right now. So you can kind of figure out and I, I recommend just playing around with it a little bit to get the physical setup of your workspace. It's just like your desk. You want to make sure that it's comfortable for you. And um, that's the beauty of it is that it's really easy to move these things around. So then we've got our color puck. Now this is really handy. I'm going to put this next to it so that you can really see what we're doing. So this is basically what we're working with. And if you've done any sort of digital art, um, you will recognize this which is basically if you're adding black, you're going darker. If you're adding white, you're going lighter. So this is the tone of the color. And then we've got the saturation level left to right. So visually this little puck wheel of, of the color editor is a good example of what we're doing, but basically you can click on the color puck and you get this mini version. So you can easily click around. Okay. You can easily click around and, go, Oh, I want, I want a nice orange. And then you go, okay, we've got a nice orange. Oh, that's a little bit too desaturated. I want it to be brighter. You just, you literally tap your stylus on the color puck and you drag it to the right. Now it's more saturated or I want it less saturated. I want, you know, gray. I don't want any color to it. There we go. Okay. Now we've got less saturated. Well, I want a darker gray. You just drag your stylus. You click on the puck itself and you drag your stylus down now. Oh, now I have a darker gray. Well, actually I do want it kind of saturated, but I want it really bright. So let's go all the way up top. So now we've got lighter, right? Ooh, now we want all the way light. Okay. So this simple, easy piece, I'm just going to move that back over there. This tool right here with the color shading, this is really, really handy as a landscape designer because say, say I'm doing something where I have a, let's grab a little bit more of a natural color. Let's say here on the plan, I have uh, a hedgerow along here. Okay. So let's, let's just say for, for the sake of drawing and diagramming, I'm like, okay, I want to put a hedgerow right here. Then I can just easily drag the, you see, I'm clicking and dragging on the puck and I drag it up, which gives me a lighter tone of that same color. And then I can drag it down a little bit and I get a darker tone of the same exact color. Um, so that gives me instantly this kind of 3d look or like a kind of a diagrammatic 3d look. Now, um, there are lots of lovely shortcuts in SketchUp. My goal with this isn't so much to give you a tutorial on how to use the program. There's lots of tutorials out there that are great on the actual program. So if you have any specific questions, I might be able to answer them. However, you know, I also 
think that it's great if you're really trying to learn the ins and outs of the program there's great tutorials already on that i'm just showing how this is really applicable to landscape design i'm going to walk through some of the features but obviously in depth you might want to go a little bit more into this with something else so let's let's uh let's delete this layer and add a new one so there's there's something that's really handy now this is a tool that i use on and off with um depending on the the type of thing i am drawing in sketchbook which is there is this tool called the predictive stroke and so what this basically does is it smooths out your lines so if i make you know all these different things like this it'll it'll try and predictively figure out what I was trying to do. So like if I draw a circle and it's not quite circular, it fixes it. So this is really handy if you are doing something like that where you're just trying to diagrammatically go, oh, I want you know this here and this here, uh, this over here. It just cleans up your lines a little bit and makes it a little bit nicer. Now, where it doesn't work for me as a landscape architect is when, let's let's get a little bit smaller brush size here. Uh, let's choose a color you can see against the mulch. So let's say I'm trying to draw a tree, right? This is still kind of thick. Yeah, that's where it doesn't work. <laughs> so that's a great example of how there's certain tools that you might want to turn on for certain pieces and we'll, I'll kind of point it out as we go. And then, um, if there's anything that comes up, I'll, I'll, you know, share that and make sure that, um, that's all going good. Now I want to make sure for a second. Okay, good. <laughs> I have, um, on my other screen, I have a program that sometimes shares if you're live and, uh, I try and keep my, my, uh, personal life and business life separate online, right? We all try to do that. Theoretically speaking, I just had to double check that. Okay. So that's a really good example of how the, how the predictive stroke can be helpful, how it can be unhelpful. So, that's I'm kind of thinking plants right now but another thing that's really helpful in this tool is that if you are doing hardscape or you're laying things out I like to use orange as a grid just because it's a it's a good contrast in color to the to the normal um, satellite images so you can hold down shift and anything you draw will be a straight line so I'm moving my stylus all over and um, anything I draw will be a straight line. So if I'm drawing a straight line and I'm trying to do it by hand, um, let's pick a spot where we can kind of, let's zoom in here. So if I'm trying to draw this by hand, you know, that's, it works like the predictive stroke thing helps a lot, but there's sometimes it doesn't. Um, if I hold shift, it's always straight, which is really nice so that you don't always have to grab the ruler tool, which is a little bit clunky. I, it works well, but it's just a little clunky in that you have to manually move it around the screen just like you would a ruler. So for quick, just diagrammatic lines, you go, okay, here's where I want this. Okay, this is the center line of this. And you just keep holding shift and that way you're always getting straight lines, which is fantastic as a designer. So that's kind of, those are the basics that I wanna talk about as far as some of the different areas we're gonna be looking at. Just like with most programs these days, of a drawing nature. We have layers over here. We have, we, you can add as many or as little, obviously with file management, it's really great to go in and make sure that you name your layers and say, you know, um, example brush, uh, diagram, you know, something like that, where, where right now I want to show you guys some of the brushes that you can use and things like that. So keeping track of that, that's just file management. That's just kind of your own preference. Um, no one should ever see the insides of my documents because I, I go back through and I rename everything and organize it later. But as part of my creative process, I'm adding a lot of layers. And that's the beautiful thing about digital is that when we are doing this hard copy, right? You have a piece of trace paper or you have your vellum and you're, you're literally putting marker on it or you're drawing on it. You mess up, you gotta do a whole new page. With digital, it's fantastic because you can erase, you can, um, you can add different layers. So if you mess up on a new layer, you can just delete it. Um, there is so much more flexibility to being able to design digitally that um, designing analog is, it's, it's just different. It's very different. 
So I really love this program. I've used this program for the last eight years or so, and it's, it's great. I even have it on my phone so I can take notes on the property. It's really handy for that. So let's talk about brushes and different tools because this program, what I love about this program, and uh, I'm just actually going to make a, a background to this and we're going to turn off the the plan for a second because I, I want to demonstrate this in a way that you can really see what we're working with so there's all these really great brushes i just re-downloaded this program so i'm still in the process of setting it up which is great because i can do that with you and we can kind of go through it together we can walk through it together um there are all of these pre-loaded brush sets in here and when this was part of the Autodesk, they had a bunch of different blogs and a different bunch of different artists that they worked with and imported their brushes. So there was a whole watercolor set. There was a whole fur set. There was a whole, so they've, they've imported a lot of these into here. So we, we have those now, but there's some that they don't have that I really like that I had on my other tablet. So let's grab a color that's easy to see. Uh, oh, that's our brush. There we go. Well, let's, let's do yellow. Okay. So there's all these different tools and just like with any art class, what I would recommend to you as the designer, as the artist is go through and play around with this. Uh, it's really important when getting a new tool or getting a new pencil or a new pen, you got to test it out. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click on, this is the design pencil. This is kind of their basic, basic tool in this thing. So I'm going to draw with it and there's a certain feel to it. It's one of those things where, yeah, you're going light, you're going dark. It has a really good, um, it has a good feel to it. Of course, once we get really big, you can see it has this texture pattern to it, right? So you're, you're mimicking the way a graphite pencil would look which you know you may or may not want. If you want something where you are having a graphite pencil, that's great. And then there's kind of a, a watercolor pencil. So this is more, um, even more textured. You can really see how textured that is. So this might be useful somewhere, maybe for a gravel edge or something like that, where you've got gravel and you might want to layer kind of that texture over, over it. But what I suggest is doing just what I'm doing right here. Test these out, grab them, play with them, try the different, you know, different um, levels of pressure and things like that. You might like more of a paintbrush uh, where you can kind of, you can have a different level of pressure. So there's a couple that I always use personally. This is me. This is my preference. Um, let's move to a different spot on the canvas just so you can kind of see it. So I have, I have a couple different tools. So I have this pen. This is, this is like my design pen and, uh, you can set up different, different kind of, um, metrics. Again, there's some great tutorials out there on this, but this is where I found my happy spot. I literally spent a decent chunk of time just playing with this, seeing a little bit more of like how the pressure works. Okay. I like that. Ooh, maybe I want a little more flow, less flow. I literally went through and just played with this. This is, this is my happy pen. This is literally, if I apply a lot, um, if I apply a little bit, if I apply a lot, um, it, it really works really well. So it's kind of nice. And I'm actually noticing that it doesn't even have the same level of taper. I have to, I might have to reimport. So, um, either way, it's really nice to get them dialed in once you do that. But so I have my design pen, which this is my, this is my, I use this to sketch anything. This is, I'm laying something out and I'm like, okay, so we're going to have a lawn area here and a tree over here. And I want this to be centered on here. You know, this is, this is my, what I like to use as my drawing pen. Um, then I always like to have a background fill. So this is, this is like a oil brush. This gives you a nice background, but as you can see, it's got that oil texture. So you're blending, you're pulling uh, colors through. You can see that it has like a blend mode to it. It's very 
um, like wet on wet paint. So I like that just as a background sort of, oh, I want to add, you know, kind of a look in the background that then I can draw over the top of. And then I can go, okay, this is what we have here and over here. So this is, this is a brush I like as a background brush. Um, the other thing that I will always use is a watercolor brush. So something with a good opacity to it so that I can do basically what we do with markers a lot of the time. So I can fill in an area. I'm doing this really roughly, obviously. Um, let's actually, let's go in here. So I can fill in an area and I can grab the lighter side and then I can grab the medium. So that gives me, for me, I like the watercolor brush for the marker. They actually, um, originally when they were part of Autodesk, I don't know if they're still doing this, but they, all their colors in here were, were in tandem with Copics. So a lot of the colors on their palette was, was the Copics. So it actually interacts. If you use the Copics marker, uh, it interacts with things the same way a marker would. So you're literally laying color down and you can see if I choose a really light color like yellow, um, it doesn't show up. It, it acts the same way as a marker would, which is nice. So if you like markers, you like that look, you like the layers that you can get, you like that depth of feeling, um, you can get that on your plants, which is really nice. Uh, also, if you're into a little bit more of um, kind of pastels and things like that. We've got those. So there's all sorts of brushes and I really suggest going through, seeing what works for you, seeing kind of your style. So for me, I like using the watercolor brush because I don't really like that marker look. I like a little bit more uh, gradient, a little bit cleaner for me personally, but um, it definitely does have its place where you can do that. So let's move over to how I like to layer the space. So here's the process I go through when I'm getting into a new design. Let's, let's pull this up. So let's say this is a satellite image as sometimes it can be. Um, I'm going to grab like a nice orange color and we're going to call this layer our diagram drawing layer. So on this project, just to orient you to what's going on here, this is a this is a rural property. They are rebuilding the main house right here. And there's a long driveway coming up. So we've got a long driveway. There's a really steep hillside. This is a really, really steep hillside here. There used to be a driveway that went all the way around. So this used to be kind of a roundabout driveway. And this area is nice and flat here. But from here down, there's a really big hillside. So this area here is kind of a hilltop that they flattened out to put the house on. And so it creates some interesting design problems. Obviously you're seeing the final product that we had once we came up with the design for them, this is our, our hardscape detail for them. Uh, let's turn that back on. All right, oops, I went back too far. <laughs> All right, so let's just walk through this as if we're doing the design ourselves. So what I want to start to do as a designer is I want to think about how the people are using this space. So if, let's say this is the front door, okay? So that's our front door. Then we have a, a back door here. Okay, so we've got front door, back door. We have a door here. We have a door here. And this whole side is the garage. Okay, let's put our, let's put our predictive stroke on so that it's a little cleaner. Okay, so we've got kind of the building itself. Then we have, uh, there's a gate over to the neighbors over here. There's a shed here. There's a vegetable garden here. There is, um, this is a horse pasture down here. And they have the barn over here. This is the main driveway. 
They also have this little access road that goes along here and kind of like a fire trail road that goes up that way. So those are kind of the, the pathways or the destinations, the, um, I'm blanking on the term right now. The, um, oh my goodness. Anyway, that's where people are going to be driving and walking. And this is, this is our path. So if we're thinking about it that way, what we're going to do, let's, let's think about hierarchy. So this point from, let's do a nice thick line. So this point from here to here, right from here to here is going to be a high traffic area. Even more than that, guests will be parking here and they will be parking here. So actually these two locations are really high traffic. So we've got those two spots. Now kind of going down in priority, I would say actually like third priority is guests going from here to here, right? So you're going to have guests coming to the front door through uh, either up the stairs or through the lawn area. Now, this is important in a design to be beautiful, but also it's going to be less trafficked. So this is always an interesting kind of debate on properties like this, or even when you have a front yard and there's a walkway through the front yard, the people living in the house will not usually park on the road unless there's no driveway parking, there's no um, garage parking, guests will park on the road. So you're thinking about the guest experience or visitor experience, and that's really what this this kind of, um, this area is. So we're thinking that's, that's the curb appeal of this property. Even though we're in the country, that's the curb appeal. Now I'm going to use a whole different color. I'm going to use green. This is probably back here. This is probably where the clients are going to use more. Obviously they're going to park in the garage theoretically, if they don't, you know, use the garage for storage. Uh, but most of the time they're going to be going in through the mudroom. They're going to be back there in the back of the house coming in through that. So as you can see, this tool of SketchUp is really useful for diagramming, for, for thinking this through. It helps me in, in laying out spaces, right? We're laying out the space. We're trying to figure out where paths are going. Um, and this is where we start to lead to spots where... As you can see on the design itself, we have, um, let's use this. So we've got a path here. We've, we have steps coming down here. We've got a little path from the parking area over. We have a path around the back side of the house here. We have a ramp coming up and then we have steps, uh, dealing with that, that height. Um, so you can kind of see how by being able to just draw out these ideas like you would on paper or like you would anywhere else. Uh, this, this tool is really useful because as you saw, I grabbed all the different colors really quickly of like, oh, I've got yellow here. And then, oh, we need, uh, this path is more important. So being able to just grab that palette over there and do this, it saves a lot of time. And being able to turn those layers off and turn them on. Because for example, let's say, uh, maybe they're building a guest house over here. Okay. We're just going to do this for an example and they're building this guest house over here. And suddenly we need to reorient the way the paths work. So if the guests are parking over here, right, this is their guest parking area. We're going to want a path that goes towards that. And maybe we want an area for the guests over here where they have a little bit of privacy from the main house. So the building blocks them and they have a little private area and then Maybe we want them to also have a little path over to the vegetable garden over here so that they can kind of wander through and go pick some veggies. Maybe this is a, a rental. Maybe it's, um, you know, a mother-in-law unit sort of dealio. And then we'll probably want a path that connects from the main path into there. So we'll have, we'll have all these different paths. Well, okay, that's great. I've got the diagram. Now what? This is where it's really fantastic. This is where digital comes in handy. So now we've got these paths here. It's diagrammatic. All right, well, let's make this look a little more realistic. So let's say that this path here, I'm going to use, I'm still going to use a diagrammatic color. So as you can see on the plan, that's the final plan, uh, we're using, we're using blue as our color coding for the hardscape. 
So let's say we want to make this path, we want to continue this path down. All right. So that path continues down. Uh, this is going to end up being a little patio over here. And we're kind of filling that in, right? Let's fill that in nicely. And then maybe we want a secondary material. Let's use this gravel, okay? So this is our gravel color. Let's bring the gravel in here. Maybe the hardscape comes around the side of the house here, like that. We've got, but we've got the gravel path. And then we've got, uh, let's do the gravel path around to the vegetable garden too. All right, so like gravel path comes off of there and around there. So now you can go in with um, a fine marker if you want to add some definition. All right, and you can, oops, maybe that's a little too thin. So you can kind of create your edges if you need to, if you want it to be a little bit more professional looking. And I would actually do this as a separate, I'm doing it all on one layer, but I would suggest doing your line work on a separate layer so that if you need to edit it, you don't, you don't have to redo your color blocks. So we've got this, so we've got that like that. And uh, then we've got our gravel over here. So you can see really easily, you can start to layer the spaces and then you turn off your diagram and ta-da, you have, you have kind of your presentation for the conceptual design. So that's, that's a really brief overview of how you can use this tool for the conceptual design. I think next session we'll go into exactly the the layers the, the way that i go through we'll grab a project that i've done and we'll kind of look at it and we'll look at the different layers and you can kind of see how how i build up the space it's just like doing a drawing there's certain ways that you want to set things up you also want to get your color palette set up correctly all of these things go into making a wonderful landscape design please if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask I'm, this is all a process of learning, so if you have questions about how to set things up, maybe the file types, anything like that, let me know. And uh, thank you for tuning in for, for this uh, first part of the sketchbook episode. And I'm just going to put my tablet to the side. There we go. Well, let's get you back on full screen. So, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, if you have any questions, again, reach out and uh, I look forward to our next session. I will get a schedule going of when we're going to be doing the live streams. So if you want to be here during the live stream asking questions, uh, we'll have that up and available. And then all of this will be edited down into uh, a much finer package, a much more concise package where we'll just get the important information across without a lot of the in-between stuff. So thank you again and uh, I look forward to seeing you again.